Wait, evil trees? The planet is fighting back! Quick balloon harder! Welcome to Deep Thoughts While Gaming, I'm Chris Chappell. Today we dive into the dystopian and wonderfully weird world of Remnant 2 and its recently released expansion, The Awakened King. Now I know what you're thinking, it's just Dark Souls with guns, right? Well, guns are definitely a large part of the title's core gameplay, but let me ask you this. Can you summon a fiery set of meatballs to destroy your enemies in Dark Souls? Just something to think about. This new adventure is set decades after the defeat of the Dreamer, the first title's chief antagonist. They dream no more, but their creations are very much alive, although alive may be a bit of a stretch in some cases. After creating a sweet custom character of their own, players assume the role of a new traveler on their way to the infamous Ward 13, where they're swiftly dragged into the otherworldly conflict. That's right, smile and strap in because the fun has arrived. Pay no mind to the bodies, they're just sleeping. In this new installment of the series, developed by Gunfire Games, a hostile tree-like race known as The Root is back, again, and in far greater number. After all this time, those guys are still hell-bent on corrupting and erasing humanity from existence. Clearly a morality tale about the dangers of climate change. Mother Earth is fighting back. Do you want to be killed by evil trees? Better live in a pod and eat the bugs! While their true origin and intentions are a mystery, don't worry. Remnant 2 helps to sate some of our curiosity surrounding our bark-skinned adversaries and their obsession with the corruption of other life forms. So the Root are back again and you'll need to save the universe for a second time. On the bright side, many of the best gameplay elements of the original title are back as well. The new archetype-based class system has been completely upgraded. and now allows for players to equip a combination of two different archetypes. They can even be hot-swapped, in and out at any time, on a whim. Don't like your build? Change it up! Getting stuck in a role you don't enjoy is a thing of the past. All the more reason to get out there and hunt down as many new archetypes as you can and create that ultimate build. The fully integrated two to three player co-op experience has been overhauled as well, in order to run infinitely smoother this time around. Like its predecessor, no special objects or summoning items are needed to play with others. Instead, Remnant 2 has chosen to stick with the tried and true co-op experience of the original. Drop into a friend's game, kill some evil trees, obsessively search for hidden items, and drop out. Couldn't be more simple. The dystopian worlds can certainly be faced alone, However, multiplayer allies will be a massive advantage in overcoming the maniacal challenges within them. As they say, friends who slay together, stay together. It's kind of like the Care Bears, but with guns. Not unlike the previous title, Remnant 2 sports completely randomized design elements in order to set the series apart from other Souls-like adventures. Each campaign, every world, the unique encounters, and even enemy locations are all completely random every time, so you'll have no idea what to expect or who to expect it from. Isn't that amazing? Done are the days of endlessly memorizing the locations where impending death awaits you around the corner. Every corner can be that corner now. So your character will be set on fire, dismembered, and decimated in countless new ways. And you'll be forced to play patty cake with a large redstone from time to time in order to replenish your health and resources. It just gives you more chances to stumble upon a secret item along the way. Well, that or think up new excuses to explain the dark circles under your eyes beyond, I was up all night trying to defeat a large moth. So have you explored every inch of a biome and run out of things to shoot, blow up, or cut in half while endlessly searching for hidden items and passageways? Don't worry, you can just reload a world in adventure mode to slice and dice away like Ron Pope Peel on a rampage. With the sheer number of hidden items, lost archetypes, and exciting boss encounters, the game demands to be replayed again and again. Each new secret found only points to further curiosities. Does that new item or weapon have any special meaning within the story? Or can it help you unlock other elements in the game? Looks like you'll just have to find out. While curiosity is said to have killed the cat, it appears to have far more than nine lives here. A primal curiosity bordering on obsession, will push you around every corner and into the wonders of the unknown world around you. The payoffs can be amazing, if you look hard enough. 
Surely the underbellies of ancient tombs, infested waterways, and cursed asylums have to be hiding something fantastic within them, right? William James, an American philosopher, called curiosity the impulse toward better cognition. He believed it was the desire to understand which one does not, which drove mankind to curiously explore the world around them. Building off William's work, the Canadian psychologist Daniel Berlin soon expanded the definition even further. This time the concept was dissected into multi-dimensional variables as to better describe curiosity's unusual nature, for in fact, even the concept of curiosity has received the multiverse treatment. His expansion of the definition initially separates curiosity into perceptual and epistemic forms, the desire to be aroused by something novel and unique, diminishing with exposure or alternatively, a pure appetite for knowledge itself as to better understand the world around us. Traditionally, the perceptual form of curiosity has been seen within one's formative years of childhood before transitioning into its primarily epistemic state in adulthood although shiny things are still pretty great. Adding to the distinction, Berlin further divides these definitions into specific or diverse variations. The need to experience or learn something in particular, or inversely, the need to merely experience any stimulation as a way to avoid the depths of boredom. Remnant 2's straightforward appeal to our many dimensions of curiosity is something that has allowed it to stand out in a notable way within the Souls-like genre. It nearly simultaneously inspires the need to discover novel things, to be drawn toward knowledge in a given environment, the want to find proverbial keys to specific information, and to deftly avoid boredom with a nearly never-ending supply of randomization. Berlin's work had provided a foundation for much of our understanding of curiosity for decades. However, the American psychologist and economist George Lowenstein believed there was something more to consider. He theorized that human curiosity was more akin to a drive state than an intellectual need. He believed the concept was catalyzed by something far more intrinsic, stemming from a cognizant sense of lack. He described curiosity as a cognitive-induced deprivation that arises from the perception of a gap in knowledge and understanding. Lowenstein's information gap theory holds that curiosity functions like other drive states, such as hunger, instead of a conscious pull to better understand. With a small dose of new stimuli, right away one can prime the recipient's curiosity and make them want to know more, explore, or experience what is being offered. Once this proverbial hunger has been satiated, however, any additional stimuli can actually lower subconscious levels of curiosity. Not unlike trying to describe the endless lore of Warhammer 40k to a stranger. This is why titles with wonderfully crafted worlds that force feed the lore can be unbearably grating, often turning players off, despite the amazing work invested into their creation. To that point, one might argue that Souls-like titles often draw players into their interesting worlds with greater success due to the very inverse of such satiation. Lore must be sought after by those curious enough to do so of their own volition, leaving them wanting more instead of proverbially overfeeding them. Speaking of overfeeding, blech. Whether exploring for the sake of boredom's defeat or because one's mind desires a greater understanding, curiosity can often move individuals to obsess over things they cannot explain and entice others from afar just the same. Its magnetic influence is undeniable and, at times, ineffable. This is a powerful thread woven through the game's core experience, driving you to continue to explore and endlessly fill your coffers with new items, weapons, and abilities. You may not always be able to explain why you are desperately attempting to solve a particular puzzle or unlock a weapon you don't even need, but the drive of human curiosity pushes you on nonetheless. Since Remnant's release, many have spelunked into the subconscious depths of their curiosity and have returned wanting more from their completed campaigns. But worry not, the Awakened King's Ambien has just worn off and he's pretty angry. Thankfully, you and your friends are here to put him back to bed with the permanently calming effect of your bullet storm. Well, if you survive your journey through the biomes of Remnant 2 and beyond. But remember to keep watching Deep Thoughts while gaming. And who knows? Click that like button and something special might just happen.